Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. This is actually the first episode recording of this new year, 2022, uh, and it's been crazy already. 2022 is still feeling like a continuation of 2020. We are in the third year of this pandemic. Uh, so I am just kind of off bat. Just happy to be here, be safe in the comfort of my home. I'm grateful to have heat. Uh, and I know that there are a lot of people who have been impacted by COVID and it seems like even more now than in the first year of it. So I just please, um, I'm praying for everyone and I just, you know, I encourage everyone, wear your mask, stay inside as much as possible, stay warm, stay safe, because, you know, we're also in the meat in the uh, ugh, the mist of winter. And so as I am recording this, it is snowing and or icing outside. So just kind of want to say that off front. And so, like I said, one of the things I'm grateful for um, is definitely to be alive, to be in good health. I, I have some family members who are currently under the weather and, and family and friends who, like I said, have been um, been dealing with with COVID and just, just, you know, the regular flu or other sicknesses or things of that nature. Um, but above that, I am grateful to be a part of one of the, I'm sorry, not one, but to be a part of the greatest sorority, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Today is January 16th, 2022, and we are celebrating 102 years of scholarship, service, sisterhood, and finer womanhood. Um, so happy Founders Day to all my sorors. Uh, when this comes out, it would have passed, but you know, we're going to keep the party going. I'm also excited because I am in my 10th year um, as a member of this wonderful sorority. And so I am encouraged by all of the women who have become come before me and that I get to serve with. And so just keep doing the great work, uh, sorors. And so with that, as we are in this new year, and although it's a new year, new calendar year, it really feels like I said, a continuation of everything that we're, we've been going through. And in some ways, it feels like it's getting worse. Um, and I, you know, I think about, they always say it gets worse before it gets better. So I'm hoping that just the craziness that has happened in just these, what, two and a half weeks of this new year is an indication that we are in the worst of it so that things can get better. Like that's all that I can do is be hopeful because like I said, it's it's crazy. But as we have, you know, kind of gotten into this new year, I know here in Maryland, things started off or the year started off really with a snowstorm. So it wasn't the most pleasant, but it's often, I remember people just saying, you know, new year, what are your new year's resolutions? And I'm going to get fit. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to do this. Or just thinking of all the different things that I have set out to do at the beginning of the year or in recent years, I don't necessarily make new year's resolutions on January 1st. Um, but usually I try to do them or implement them on my birthday, which is April 2nd. Um, but often, and I didn't see it as much this year, but often in recent years, I always see that new year, new me or fresh start. And this is a new year. I'm going to do this and all those different sayings, which I do, I want to believe are well-meaning, but I was talking to someone last week and I was like, honestly, I've just been like new year, same me. It is. I am the same me that I was at uh 11:59 on December 31st 2021 and at 12:01 a.m. on January 1st 2022 um however I'm not the same person that I was 6 months ago or even a year ago and so it's like it's a new year I'm the same me but I'm an improved me and I'm going to continue to get better and to improve and so it's I often think of or not often, but I like to think of New Year's or the beginning of a new year as more of a time to reflect, kind of like the end of December, early January, just like, okay, where, if I think about where I was a year from, a year ago, and just like reflect on that. And so it's like, I'm grateful. For one, I woke up and I'm able to still, you know, I'm blessed to still be alive and be able to just be among the living, as the old folks would say. But it's, 
excuse me, it is, like I said, just thinking about, I'm the same me, but improved. And I'm continuing to improve. And I don't remember who it was, but I talked to someone last year and I remember they were saying that they don't set goals. They just essentially just work on doing things and being consistent and doing things daily, but they don't necessarily like set this on a lofty goal. They don't want to make a list of goals. They just kind of decide some things that they wanted to do. So it's like, okay, what are some things that I have, that I began doing in, you know, last year that I want to continue doing? And one of those things, well, I would say I started this probably like 2018, 2019, you know, just kind of making a decision to be healthier and not necessarily try any more diets. Because if you name it, I've probably tried it in the sense of a, a, some type of fast, some type of diet, a cleanse. Um, some different pills, all those different things in the name of trying to lose weight and get healthy or get fit. And it was just a matter of like, hey, clearly these things aren't working because I'll do them for a couple months, have a little success, get frustrated. And then I just start doing whatever, eat what I want. Um, and so I remember, I want to say, yeah, it was like the end of 2018, but definitely the beginning of 2019, I just kind of made a decision to pay. I'm not going to do a diet or I'm not going to do any specific program anymore. I just want to, I was intentional or became intentional about educating myself on what works for me and paying more attention to my body in the sense of, yeah, I like it, but it may not like me or my body doesn't like it as much. And so that is one thing that I could say, I have been consistent in making better choices. Now there are definitely, I still have my days where even though I know better, I don't do better. Um, and any of my friends uh, can tell you growing up, I loved candy, I love gummy bears. Gummy bears, I would say I might've had a slight addiction to, but I love them. But it's like in recent years, as I've gotten older, they don't seem to love me, or at least my body doesn't love them. And so I don't get the same enjoyment. And if I do, oftentimes I end up paying the price because of stomach pains or different things like that. Um, so I definitely don't eat nearly as much candy as I used to. Um, I have incorporated, I've always liked vegetables, but I've made it a point to incorporate those into my diet a lot more. So much to the point that when I go a day or two without them, I feel the difference. Like I feel the deficiency. Um, same with water. I've always drank a lot of water, but just, you know, more water. Anyone who knows me knows that I am nine times out of 10, I will have a bottle of water. This is the current bottle of choice. It is a gallon. I got a, I like to say it's a pretty one, but um, I would say if you've known me in the last 10 years, you've likely seen me with some type of big monstrosity of a water bottle. Um, but that's just, those are some examples of some of the things that it's like, okay, I want to be better. Uh, and to put less emphasis on what the scale says, because me and weight, we have had a difficult relationship most of my life, definitely most all of my adult life. Um, and just getting to a place of being comfortable with me, with my body at whatever size it is, however I look. Um, and oftentimes my motivation for exercising or adjusting what I ate was just because I wanted the scale to go down. You know, I still would like that number to go down, but I can honestly say I'm in a better place now in the sense of I feel good in my body and I am able to move and do the things that I want to do with ease or with a little more ease. Um, so, you know, part of me deciding to be intentional about my health, that also included me getting active again. And so that has looked different over these last uh, three, four years, especially in the midst of the pandemic. Um, you know, part, part sometimes it was me working out with a personal trainer. I like that. I don't always like the cost associated, but I've learned that that works for me. Um, and I do better when I have someone that is right there working out with me. Um, I have done group fitness. I got into, you know, I restarted riding my bike uh, in 2020, especially since being outside was like one of the quote unquote safest things to do at that time. I did a lot of bike riding in 2020. I've done workout videos, things at home, just kind of making things up, going for walks. Um, currently, I'm back to working out with a trainer at a, at a smaller gym because uh, I had kind of fallen off a little of the fitness the beginning of 2021, but just to 
I also find that working out with someone help is helpful for me because uh, as a former athlete, I've had a lot of minor injuries that I've realized like as I was doing things on my own, I ended up re-injuring myself and it was just causing more problems. So it's like, okay, for a little bit of time, I might need to work with someone just to make sure I am doing things correctly, you know, in terms of form and building up strength and strengthening those specific uh, muscle groups so that as I go on to do something else, I don't inadvertently injure myself and then cause more problems because that is a cycle I do not want to continue. But like I said, these are just some examples of things that I've, I started um, a couple years ago and it is now a new year. I'm still doing those things. I have gotten stronger. Um, my cardio under <laughs> my, uh, cardiovascular endurance has certainly improved and so I am able to do a bit more and especially since I've always had a fairly sedentary position but definitely in this pandemic I'm in the house a lot more and I sit most of the day I'm in front of a computer screen just about all day because that's just the nature of the work that I do it requires a lot of reading research writing um, you know now zoom calls or phone calls so it's some things I've done to, like I said, to incorporate the active is I just make a point to get up every 15 minutes to an hour, get up and even if just walking around the house, doing something to keep my heart rate up. Also, it breaks up the monotony because working from home and working for myself, I don't have coworkers. So, and trying to be mindful of all the different safety precautions in this pandemic has made a social life. <laughs> real different um so definitely still do things with family and friends when 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 it's able to but it's just like i said in thinking about all that stuff it's hey i am still latavia i'm an improved version and i want to continue improving on that and one of the other things that i started in this pandemic was and i mentioned it i think i mentioned it a few episodes like at some point in an episode but uh i've always well, I won't say always. I've always kind of liked creating things and, um, you know, used to do the little friendship bracelets and uh, learning how to crochet, just different little things here and there. I started, I would say I learned about waist beads while I was in college. I didn't start wearing them until 2018 and just kind of looking into what they were, why, you know, their creation, their origins in Africa and why women wear them, what they mean different things like that. So I started wearing them and then just because I was curious, started looking into how to make them. And it was, it's been a bit of a hobby stress reliever, but I want to say in towards the end of 2020, um, or 2020, I decided I was like, oh, let me, you know, this could be a new business venture. And so I have I would say slowly been making my way into that in the sense of making waist beads, making and selling waist beads and bracelets. And that is one thing that I, I have said I want to improve upon. I want to continue doing but get better, um, not just in the craft of it, because that is one thing I have been focusing on these last couple of years is as I am creating these things, I want to get better because in my mind, if I'm going to sell something, it needs to be good quality. I want it to, I don't want it to just look nice. I want to make sure that if somebody is paying money for something, especially if my name is associated with it, that it's a good quality. It's going to last. I don't want somebody walking in and it just, oop, it falls or it breaks and you have beads everywhere. Um, or it just looks janky. From as far as I can remember, I've always been taught to do things with the spirit of excellence and to, you know, be thorough and to have great presentation, but just great quality. And so that is one of the things that I, I but it's like, that's great. But I, I've found that that's also something that in our, specifically within, I would say for the black community and even women as well, that we are often, you know, taught and encouraged and still you need to be great. You've got, it's got to have great quality. You got to be better. And that is great, but it can also be a hindrance because we get so focused when I won't even say we, I'll say me. I get very focused on making sure that it is great and that it's just as good, if not better than other products or other, other things out there and get so caught up in trying to perfect it that I don't end up doing or releasing anything. So 
as I said, one of the things for this year that I want to improve upon is actually committing to this being a business. And in order for that to happen, I have to talk about it. I was like I said, I think I mentioned it in passing in a previous episode, but I do create and make waist beads and bracelets uh, with various seed beads or um, gemstones. And so I call myself, you know, oh, I'm just trying to build up my inventory. I'm building up the inventory so that I can then put it out there. And honestly, I've done that. But also, it's been, for lack of a, it's been an excuse. It's been a reason or a way to procrastinate because, oh, I don't know. It might, might be this. It might not be that. What about this? Just coming up with all these different excuses or reasons to procrastinate and put a hold off putting it out there. So, um, like I said, this year I am making the commitment to myself and to those listening that I am going to do better. I'm going to start releasing, um, whether it's just the images or just sharing information about the fact that I do make bracelets and waist beads. And I actually want to show, uh, some of you all some show you some of them for those listening. I know you can't see it, but I'll be sure to include, include a link, um, so that you can see the visuals of, the difference bracelets and waist beads that I have created um, because it is something that I would say it has been and it's not just so much about making and selling jewelry but I would say it's more of a representation of what it has meant to me and how waist wearing and even creating waist beads has been uh, helpful to me in my journey of just learning to love and appreciate myself my body as it has <laughs> shifted and changed, stretched, uh, shrunk at, at different points in life. Um, but just of embracing my, you know, femininity, the confidence, the courage, the sensuality, just all of the different things that come along with what waist beads represent and how they have made me feel. And even just, like I said, even a confidence booster of knowing, Hey, this is something it's an accessory for my body. It's a jewel, you know, it's jewelry for my body. It's great for me to look at. And honestly, I don't wear them for other people. I wear them for myself. They also play a big role and or are very helpful if you are trying to manage your weight or track your progress in terms of weight loss. And not even just weight loss. If you're I'm someone who I have a very sensitive stomach and certain things that I eat, I get bloated very quickly. And it's when you're wearing waist beads and if you wear them, whether you wear, um, some people wear them lower on their hips. I wear them typically just around like the middle of my waist. And so if I have eaten more than I need to, or if I'm feeling bloated, the waist beads, it's tight and then they rise up. And so, but also when I am, that's a way to kind of help me. Obviously I feel, I know what it feels like to be bloated, but sometimes, and, and I would say, as I was starting to pay more attention and I didn't always know, the waist beads were a good way to help me gauge what was going on with my body. And then, of course, as I have lost weight or lost inches, um, the waist beads let you know as well because they uh, they fall. And so if you so, for example, I have one that when I first put it on, it was closer to um, right under my my bra line or right at the top of my waist. And as I have made prog progress, they drop lower closer to my hips and they get looser. Um, so like I said, that's just that I will I'm gonna include some pictures of of that. And also I want to show you all one of the ones I am making right now. So this is, it'll be a bracelet. And these are some teal and gold and like yellow gold beads. Um, it's actually one that I am, is actually an example of something I made and it broke, but since I initially made it, I have learned a new technique to make it, I have improved upon it. And so I'm going to reuse the beads to, um, to, you know, just, it's actually for my mom, but uh, I'm going to remake it for her. But as I told her, it'll be a stronger, more reinforced bracelet. And so I'll include a picture of the finished product. Um, but I'm sharing with you all like some of the things that I have reflected on in terms of what have helped me feel better um, emotionally, mentally, the, of course, 
eating better has started, you know, I feel better. Like literally exercise alone. And I can tell like almost immediately now when I eat something, as much as I love snacking or chips, uh, not necessarily cookies. I'm a chips person. I love chips, but it's like, I cannot enjoy them as much because, or I might enjoy it in the moment, but shortly thereafter, I'm semi regretting it. Um, but the waist beads and the bracelets, or I should just say the jewelry making kind of, uh, that has been great in the sense of helping me when I'm feeling anxious. It's become like a bit of a stress reliever of just taking that energy, getting out of my head and putting it into, putting it in to something and creating something and to know that, oh, okay, I took all of this energy that was essentially becoming negative and working against me and my overall productivity. And I've been able to create something pretty, something beautiful that I can enjoy, but also, hey, someone else can enjoy this um, and hopefully it can help them um, in similar, if not the same ways that it has been helpful for me. Uh, and, and it's the same, even like I said, as I have stepped into full-time entrepreneurship with the goal and the focus of working and helping, working with and helping other entrepreneurs uh, or individuals just who are they are taking that leap. They've taken that leap of faith. They are doing the work. They are create. Whether you're a creator, uh, you provide a service, you provide a product, whatever you're doing. For one of the things I, I would say, for several years, I've kind of done this, but part time. And I realized I'm in some respects doing the the clients, my potential clients, or people who I'm saying that I want to serve. I kind of started to feel like I was doing them a disservice because. I'm encouraging you to do this to grow your business and help you start and put all your time, energy, and focus on it. But I am not doing the same for my own business. And so it was, that was one of the things I would say that I considered and was a factor in my decision to say, hey, I need to commit to this full time and stop trying to essentially play both sides of the field, straddle the fence, whatever you want to call it. And so I am, like I said, I am enjoying not just the freedom, but just the the opportunity that it is to create the business to, as I'm working with uh, someone to, you know, working on what the brand is and how, how to share the message, what my message is, who I am, what is the service that I provide so that I can in turn help others define theirs and as they create their businesses and they're working on what they provide to others, making sure that they have the protections in place so that it is secured for them as they continue to, you know, make their living, but also so they have something to pass along to their children and children's children or just to be opportunity to move about and do things as they want to, as they see fit while they're here on this earth. And then also once they're gone. So I am sharing with you all some of the things that I have been thinking about and reflecting on in this, uh, this new year. Um, but the goal, I guess if I had to say what a goal for the year is, it is to continue to improve continuing to improve upon the things that I started before, continue to be a better person, a better daughter, a better sister, a better friend, um, and also to be a more dedicated member in terms of my sorority to, you know, I was much more involved in previous years. So making a commitment to incorporate that into all that I'm doing um, and continuing to strengthen my relationship with God and, I am once again starting, uh, I have started a Bible in the year plan because I know I think in 2020 I said I was doing that, but did not finish. So I'm trying that again and I am making a commitment to doing that so that I can actually say I have read the whole Bible because that's something that I don't think it's important just to say that I did it, but also I'm curious. Um, there's a lot in there and so it's like I want to know more about that, but 
like I said, I am going to show you all just a few um, examples of the waist beads that I did. And um, like I said, as I continue to improve, I encourage you all to do the same. If you are a person who sets New Year's resolutions, great. By all means, I encourage you to do it and stick to it. But as I have been reminded, um, as I am going through this process of building my business, of make sure it's something that, you know, as we're setting goals, making sure it's something specific or measurable that you can kind of check back on. But also give yourself grace. Like, life is is a challenge and, and we have something new every day to deal with um so give yourself grace if you don't do something you know if you said oh i'm gonna go to the gym or i'm gonna work out four times a week or three times a week if it doesn't happen give yourself grace uh, or whatever it is that you set out to do um just be intentional about hey i want to get better or i want to add this in even if it's about budgeting and, you know, hey, I'm going to live, I'm going to stick to this spending plan that I created and leave it at that. We make mistakes. We'll have our moments where we do make a mistake. But if it does just kind of adjust, acknowledge like, okay, it happened. How can I make this adjustment so that I can make a better choice going in the next time and do that and keep moving, but don't beat yourself up. Trust me take it from me I know from experience it's counterproductive beating yourself up is just it adds to the cycle and more likely than not you're still not getting anything done you're just frustrated so it's new year same me I am improving and I encourage you all to do the same um, if you like I said whatever it is Whatever you decided, whether you made one, you didn't make one, or you're still working on some from two or three years ago, that is fine. Just figure out, and even if it is just focusing on one new thing or one thing of, okay, it's enough just trying to get through the day-to-day -day of life. I can't really focus on anything else. Just, hey, my goal is to make the make my bed when I get up. Let's take those extra two minutes to actually pull the sheets back up, pull the comforter and make it before I leave the house. Like, and I want to do that every day. And if you look back two months from now and that's been happening, hey, you did it. You're getting better. Um, and so I would say focus on that because as with everything, um, it is a process. And, and I think, I know for me, a big challenge that I have had in sticking to resolutions, goals, or whatever you want to call them is because I was very much focused on the end result and like, oh, I'm not there yet. It doesn't look like this. It's supposed to be like that. It's not. Um, and so just letting go of the end result and not like having it in mind, but not being so focused on what the end will look like and when I get there, but just actually Embracing the fact that, hey, no, it is not going to happen overnight. It is going to take some time. Let me focus on today. Enjoy this moment. Um, and I can honestly say that since I have done that, I feel so much lighter, so much freer. Um, I, like I said, there are still days every other day I have to remind myself, hey, <laughs> it's about the process. Enjoy it. Embrace this journey. Um, and getting a new understanding and appreciation of patience. Um, I would say it's been big for me. So I encourage you, like I said, hopefully you can hear about my experience and my stories and it will help you avoid going through some of the same things that I did. Um, but just remember that, like I said, in everything, it is about the journey. It's a process and not the destination. So focus on those things and remember that in the end, it is all good. So, as I was saying, like I said, I'm going to show you guys some of the waist beads that I have created and uh, that are available to purchase if you would like to. So, this is one of the first ones I did, blue and white for my sorority. Um, this is one that uh, I would say some people like to wear waist beads that have a clasp so you can take it on and off as you wish. And then there's what they call the traditional waist beads or tie-on ones, which are the ones that I prefer to wear, but it's essentially, it comes in just kind of a standard size. You tie it, you adjust 
you tie it where you want it to essentially so once you tie it on it's on until you unless or until you cut it off or it falls off on its own i like those they feel a little more permanent um but like i said it depends on your preference so i'm just going to show you all a couple that i have made so this is i would say like a multicolored one this one is a tie on one of the traditional ones so tie it on just another tie on we have some teal and gold and of course i you can have them in just one single color you can have multicolors really depends on your preference so this is one with a clasp and so if you see this is the clasp here you can wrap it around and then this one is like a, a twist so you just uh twist it in and then it'll be you know on your waist so, so if you want to um like i said some people they put them on and depending on what you're wearing you don't want to have them on so you can take it on and off as you please so like i said these are just some other options or some of the examples of ones that are the um clasp ones you know like i said different colors it could be single or multicolor. it really is up to your preference of what you like and then here are some of the bracelets we have like a i don't know if this is a fuchsia or magenta green and then red um the bracelets are, are elastic so you can they pull them on and off and then also, I like to do, I guess, kind of a color block or just different ones with splashes of color. So this is a yellow with red and white. I love purple. My dad's in Omega, so you know, I'll, I'll say purple and gold has a special place in my heart. But here's one, as you can see it on, the, most of it is purple, and then it's got a pop of yellow in the middle. Here's one that's yellow and white. Uh... And then of course, like I said, ones that are just one solid color. So those are some examples, of, like I said, of just some of the things that I have done. Um, if you are interested, you can, I will, like I said, there's a link to um, my Etsy page if you would like to order them. If you don't see something listed there, there's an option to request like a custom one so you can specify the color and the size so if you were say you wanted a waist bead that was one with the clasp that is one that I would need to know the size and so you would measure your waist in terms of where you want it to lay on your waist so for example if you wanted it here you would take your tape measure and you'd measure around this area and say okay then you know send me the number or if you wanted it lower then you measure there so that's just like i said an example of how you would measure your waist based on where you want the waist bead to rest if you want one of the traditional tie on ones then um they all kind of come i do them all at 50 anywhere between 50 and uh 60 inches because that gives you the flexibility to essentially choose where you want it and so I don't would need your waist measurement ahead of time because once you get it you can then choose to tie it where you want to so an example this is one of the uh, tie on ones so just so as an example if I wanted it to, if I wanted it right here, then I would take these beads and push them up on the string and then tie it or wrap it and tie it where I wanted it to rest. And then once you've tied it, you would cut off the extra string and you have some extra beads. So, like I said, those are just some examples of what I have. If you're interested or you have other questions, feel free to send me a message, leave something in the comments to let me know. But 
Thank you all for listening. Um, Happy New Year. Enjoy. Stay safe. Stay warm. And I will see you next time.